Hi, I'm Jennifer Bowker in Seattle, along with Brandon Huffman, National Recruiting Analyst for Scout.com. You know, every time, uh, every year in September, we see some players and we get to watch them sort of emerge a little later than normal, but still certainly in time for, for signing day. As you look at these uh, first early games of the season, what quarterbacks are really impressing you? Well, I mean, you've got a couple of guys, and there's some guys in the 2015 class that are making an impression, but, you know, the 2014 class, I, I would say that, that probably the guy who's making the best impression is Jalen Green. Now, he's committed to Boise State, uh, but he's really, I think, showing this year an added wrinkle of, you know, last year it was a lot of him just handing the ball off to Malik Roberson or getting the ball to a Dory Jackson. This year, Jalen Green's had to win Sarah some games. In fact, he did uh, consecutive weeks. He beat Oceanside with the help of a lot of his teammates, and he also threw an 80-yard touchdown pass in the final minutes to tie Notre Dame which they ultimately won in overtime. But I, I think for him, because he's a dual threat guy and because he's more of a mobile athletic quarterback, there was question just how good of a passer he was. And he's used this season to really show that he can sling and he can get the ball out. It doesn't hurt that he's got the talent around him, but he's had to carry his team on his back and win some games. And he's, you know, th that's been kind of his, his niche is of being a winner. But so much last year was dependent on his legs. This year, he's really having to use his arm to emerge. The, the quarterback position, kind of its own animal, recruiting done early, not so, so much for the other skill positions. Um, some big early performances this fall have kind of accelerated uh, some recruiting for some of these players, including including Trey Watson. Talk about that. Yeah, you know, another guy who was an early commit to Cal, but he, you know, he committed to Cal when he didn't have a whole lot of offers. Now a lot of schools are coming after him. And he said he's solid to Cal, but now UCLA has gotten, you know, really hot and heavy with him. USC is making a push for him. Utah is trying to steal him. Boise State, which, you know, normally you wouldn't think a Mountain West school has any chance against the Pac-12. One of his teammates committed to Boise State over several Pac-12 offers and a Notre Dame offer. So they're trying to get Trey Watson. He was visiting with Jalen Johnson to Boise State. But, you know, Watson is now, because he started the season so strong, I mean, he's almost to 1,000 yards already, and we're still in September. He started the year so strong and really shown that he's a durable every down back that now I think more schools are taking him seriously and now saying, hey, we got to get in on this guy. You know, Cal's definitely the driver's seat because they have a verbal for him. But if they do get Joe Mixon to commit, the number one running back out west, do they hold on to Watson? That's why other schools are, are kind of making on maybe Mixon stays close to home, and that gives us a shot to go after Watson. And so his performance the first four or five weeks is making him kind of a, a, a chief target for a lot of schools. So uh, switching to defensively, I know that Greg Biggins was really high on Jacob Tuiati, uh, Mariner and Scott Kennedy really uh, liking Elijah Tucker. How did these guys fly under the radar? Well, I'll tell you how they flew under the radar. They play at programs that have 12 to 15 Division One prospects and guys that have, there, there's five stars on both of those squads in the 2014 to 2015 class. St. John Bosco has five-star Damian Mama, the number one offensive guard in the country this year. Josh Rosen's the number two quarterback in the 2000. 15 class. Over at Sarah, you got the number one player on the West Coast in Adore Jackson. John Houston's a five star for next year as well. So it's easy to get overlooked when there's so much talent, and especially at Sarah. There are 17 players with Division One offers, and Elijah Juan Tucker has Dwight Williams, who's the number one outside backer in the 2014 class, to one side, and then John Houston, who's the number one linebacker, period, in the 2015 class. So it's easy for him to get overlooked when he's playing next to those guys. Go over to St. John Bosco. You've got one of the best secondaries in the country, not just on the West Coast, but in the country with two four-stars in the secondary and a three-star, and then a linebacker who's a big-time kid. Well, in Jacob Tuioti Mariner's case, he was overlooked because those guys were all over the place during the spring, going to several seven-on-seven -seven tournaments and going to camps that linemen aren't able to go to. Plus, he was playing volleyball during the spring, so he didn't get into a lot of camps. It wasn't available a lot for spring football. So that kind of helped him Fall, to the, fall through the cracks. Well, now he started the year off strong, same with Elijah Juan Tucker. Scouts are going to watch them play. College coaches are going to watch them play and to watch the Adore Jacksons, the Damian Mamas. And here's Elijah Juan Tucker getting a dozen tackles. Here's Jacob Toyota Mariner getting a couple sacks. So they've really made themselves emerge by just making plays on a team that's loaded. They're the ones that are kind of standing out. And now all of a sudden schools are starting to get involved with them because where they weren't able to see those guys before, now they're standing out to the point where college coaches are saying, hey, just add that guy to the list of elite players coming from that program. What about schools that aren't such big big names? What players are sort of making a name for themselves here early in the season? Well, I, I think there's a couple. You know, one of the guys that I'm a big fan of is Keenan Curran at Federal Way High School, not too far down the road. You know, here, here's a guy that it's had to play out of position at quarterback because there's nobody else on his team that has. He doesn't have a lot of Pac-12. In fact, he doesn't have any Pac-12 offers. But because he's played so well offensively, he's given himself a chance to make some plays defensively and, and have a pretty Pretty impressive highlight tape to show his athleticism on offense but also to show his physicality on defense and because of that now, now schools are taking a longer look at him and saying hey you know what this kid isn't a quarterback but he's certainly a darn good defensive back 
you know, he's got the size that he could be a, a corner, but he's also got the frame where he can bulk up and become a safety, but he's got that tenacity, that range, that coverage skill where he can fit in either one of those defensive back spots. And I think that when it's all said and done, he's going to have his Pac-12 offers to choose from. All right. Thanks. And keep watching all the latest recruiting news at scout.com.